Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about how to use ICMizer to work on your game. So, a lot of people kind of just try and memorize some push fold ranges, but I think when you're using this at the highest level, you are experimenting and changing one variable at a time to get a feel for to get a feel for how how it works and um, all that to get a deeper understanding of the game. So, for example, looking at this simple reshuffle spot, for example, so small blind opens. Let's say he opens to four k, and then we give him an opening range. We want to see what we could jam on him. Let's say he just opens. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to say he opens 40. That's probably not a range you give him. You probably give him some handsy jams. Uh, that isn't the purpose of this video, so I'm not trying to get the range perfect. Okay, so let's say he calls your jam with, I don't know, let's just say he calls with this, which is probably not something a lot of you guys agree with, but just bear with me. Okay, so... He raises to 4,000, and now we get to see what you can shove. Uh, let me fix this a bit. Let me say he's a bit tighter. So when it says 100, it's kind of... Okay, so four. Okay, so it says we can shove 53%. A lot of these we wouldn't actually shove, but whatever. Okay, so when using this program, it's important to change one variable at a time because just doing this doesn't really give you much analysis but if you change one thing at a time you get a a decent idea of how things work so if I just change one thing at a time I can see the effect it has if I change two things at a time I don't know if it's the first thing I change or the second thing so let's just change the race size so I'm gonna keep everything the same same opening range same call shove range and I'm gonna change his race size so before we could have shoved 56% and now it's 46% just based on a few just based on a smaller race size let's make sure so now it's 46% we could jam let's see what it was at 4000 because I forgot okay, so same thing 4000 yeah 53% so just based on a small change in sizing we can we have to jam a much tighter range Okay, so what if I change the stack size? Okay, so we could shove 54% now. What if I change the stack size to 25k? Okay, so same opening range, same call range. Now let's see what happens. Now it shoots up to 75%. So just a small change in his range, small change in his stack size of two big blinds vastly changes what you can shove vastly changes the prof the profitability of shoving. You can look at that too. 10-9 suited, 1,850 chips, right? Let's look at it with 28,000. See if that's a big difference. So 300 chip difference, about a quarter big blind difference, just based on uh, two big blind, changing a stack by two big blinds. We could go back here can look at raise size again in this situation. Uh, let's, we could change his raise size. You know, what if he we think he's opening tighter? What if he's opening 28%? Okay, so it went from 75, I think, to 45, just based on that. Okay, what if we change his call range? Let's take off a few of these hands you guys feel kind of skeptical about. Um, now what happens? Now skyrockets, shoots way up. And you guys can keep playing with that. You can do, um, you create a new ante thing. So let's say, so these antes are 200. What if I lowered the ante? What if I made the ante 100? Okay, so everything's the same, but ante's 100 now. So it went from 85 to 73 just by lowering the ante. So that gives you guys a feel of what raise size, what anti size does, uh, what stack size does, how, how specific these spots are. And you can also kind of switch the point of view as well. You, you can make yourself the raiser and think about, you know, how do I create a good raising range? And you might notice 
Like it, it's super dependent on your stack size because just two big blinds, you know, 25k and 28k, vastly changes what your opponent can shove against you. So doing shit like this, deep into understanding, just doing one-off calculations, trying to memorize shit, doesn't really help you. Always go for understanding over memory. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this. And oh shit, this applies to everything. Like anything you want to learn, always shoot for understanding over memory. And this idea of changing one variable at a time is a scientific process. Um, scientists do this when they can, and when they can't, they try to. What's the word? They try to isolate variables or account for them, which is kind of a tricky thing. Um, but we can just isolate and change one variable at a time, which just makes things super easy. Scientists have to do all these complex things to get the effect of one variable where they're trying to tease out... I forgot the word. But they have to do lots of complex shit just to see the effect one variable has on something. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Apply this to all your learning. Always go for understanding over memory. Peace.